And joining us on the line all the way from Nashville, great to be chatting to her again. It's been a long time between drinks, folks, so I'm looking forward to having a chat with Danielle Todd. Danielle, how are you doing today? I am good. How are you doing? Fantastic. I, I thought you'd lost my number or something because it's been so long. What's going on? <laughs> you know what? I just kind of went on a little bit of a break, but I feel like everyone kind of did, so... <laughs> yeah. I feel like we were all in the same boat on a break. So, um, But there's been a lot that's happened in the last couple of years, and I'm super excited to be chatting with you again. Oh, good. Well, we'll talk about that, because the last time we spoke, it was December 2019, and you were coming out for, for Tamworth, and there was all this excitement. You had all, this, all these plans for 2020, and then something happened, and it stopped, and <laughs> that affected everyone. And others sort of yes. still did things, but what? did you do because you've just gone quiet it was just like radio silence so what what did you do what what happened you know what uh so much happened and i'd like to say that tamworth by the way you australians really know how to throw a festival holy moly 14 days in a row was like insane um but it was it was such a wonderful trip when i came to australia um in 2020 And then when I came home, um, obviously the pandemic hit. A lot of people really hit the ground running in terms of music. And I did a lot of Facebook Lives and stuff like that at the beginning. I connected with a lot of people back home. And then I really just sort of took a step back and started to reevaluate my music and my life and my personal life and my career and everything and um, kind of took a much needed break. I'd been really working pretty hard for a lot of years. And it was a really refreshing time for me. And I feel like I accomplished a lot that was behind the scenes that nobody really knows about. But for me, it was like, oh, I look at all this stuff that I'm doing. (laughs) Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, how people deal with things going on around them, especially when you're in in the pandemic. I mean, there's no rule book. You've got to find your own way to navigate through it. If you've got people around you to help you do it, it's even better. But no one sort of knew what, what was going on. And a lot of artists that I've spoken to in the last couple of years, the, the biggest frustration they've had is all the mixed information that you can do this, you can't do that, and then, oh, no, you, know, you can't do that now, but you can do that. And it, that seemed to confuse them. And, and all they wanted to do was do what they love, and that is write and perform, and they couldn't do it. And it, it was so frustrating that others could, they couldn't, and it was just that confusion. That seemed to be the common thread talking to many, but they still found a way. Yes. And you know what, I'd really like to even just touch on the fact that um, I have such amazing fans. And when I first started doing uh, my Facebook Lives, um, without getting into too much detail, like a lot of people had, you know, government funding or whatever to help them through kind of the pandemic, at least at the beginning. And um, just in the position that I was where I wasn't a Canadian resident and I wasn't an American resident and this and that, I wasn't able to get a lot of the funding. And I didn't tell my fans that at the time, but I was doing these Facebook lives and really thinking to myself, like, oh boy, like I really, I hope that I can make it through, you know, however many months this is going to be. And um, I would do a Facebook live. And at the end of it, I would get these really generous tips from my fans and it would bring me to tears because I, you know, I'd be like, okay, well, there's dinner, <laughs> there's, you know, there's <laughs> yep. groceries for the week, and and musicians came together as well. And I found that that was like very inspiring and really beautiful. Uh, there's a musician in Canada who we did a show together. We did a, a split screen Facebook Live, and we performed, and we got all these tips. And at the end of it, she sent me her portion, and she didn't take her portion. She just gave it to me because she knew that I wasn't getting any help from the oh, government wow. at the time. And so it was really an incredible, like, even though there was a lot of dark stuff that happened, yeah. there was also a lot of really amazing stuff in the music community that I kind of look back on and think, like, wow, that that was really incredible that that happened. Wow, that's an incredible story. Who was a Canadian artist? We've got to give him a shout out. That was Jessie T, and okay. she has a brand new uh, single out as well called Title Track, and she is one of my very good friends from back home. So you should check her out. You'll like her. Give her my number. We'll have a chat. Happy to do so. Happy yes, to do I so. will. <laughs> well, Danielle, you said about in this time, these, these last two years, you've had a lot of personal growth and going on that growth of a journey. What sort of things, what, what areas were you growing in, and how? what was the impact of that on your songwriting? Yeah, I... Um, there was a lot of growth. Uh, I had a lot of ups and downs in that time, as as well as other people did. Um, I lost uh, a dear friend of mine during that time, 
And then I also got engaged, and I got married, and Congrats. I bought my first house. Congratulations and again, yes. just well, last week, I got a dog. <laughs> <laughs> You've done the trio. <laughs> You've done it. Yeah. <laughs> so now I have a house and a mortgage and a dog. It's really like i just become a grown-up, I guess. Out of, <laughs> out of the blue, it hit me pretty fast. <laughs> well, out of uh, where you are now, if you could go back and give some advice to uh, Danielle 2020 early on, what would you say to her? I think I would say... Um, you know, I'm really proud of a lot of the stuff that, I, that, that I've done over the years. And um, if I could give myself any advice, it would be probably don't, don't be so hard on yourself and just relax a little bit. Because uh, I think that a lot of times I'm, I'm putting out music to um, make, make myself happy and make other people happy. And I try to make, you know, everybody happy and I try to fit in and, and all these um, places and really my fans love me for me yeah. and I'm lucky for that. And so I really just need to be true to myself and relax and sit back and chill and, uh, you know, watch it happen because every time I've released a single, I've had the most amazing support from Australian radio and you guys over there in Australia and can Canadian radio and my fan base. And so I think I just, I wish that I appreciated it more. Not that I didn't appreciate it, but I wish that I soaked it in a little bit more. Which is something that um, only hindsight can tell you. Yes. Is it, you know, the, you go it's through true. it. It yeah. really is true. I just slow down. <laughs> yes, and, uh, and I remember my, my father, my late father, one of the things he always used to say to me is, uh, when you, we're going through life, Sonny goes, make haste slowly. And it took me a long time to work out exactly what he meant by that. And, and so, yeah, so uh, I know some friends and family of, of mine, they, they say, just, you're taking your time too much. Come on, speed it up. And I go, no, I'm just savoring because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm just savoring. And, I, and so that's, yeah. that's just sort of how yeah, I feel. Yeah, and that actually kind of ties in really well with, with my new single. Yes. Um, I, I wrote the song years ago, actually. I've been holding on to the song for so long and been waiting for the, po the perfect mo moment to release it. And really, the perfect moment is just the moment that you're in right yeah. now. And um, so that's why I kind of decided to come back with this single, because it really is just about living your life and appreciating all those small little moments. And um, I feel like it's kind of an important message after the last couple of years that everyone has had. Absolutely. Now, the, the song itself, it's called uh, Heat of the Moment, and it is a very happy and uplifting song, I find. But it's also a tinge of sadness in there, too. Yeah. Yeah. You notice that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a songwriter, I mean, I always turn to the the sadness that I feel like that is always what moves people the most. And that second verse in there, um, I wrote it before I before I lost uh, my friend in 2020. And I feel like now I sing that song again, and that second verse really moves me even more yeah. than what, the time that I wrote it, you know four or five years ago when I wrote it. Um, and so that just appreciating those moments of how life can really turn on a dime. And um, so you have to appreciate those moments <laughs> kind of yeah. right before they turn on you. Absolutely. And uh, I know for, yeah, life can just be like that. And yeah, just that little tinge of sadness in the song. And, you know, it's all, it's all happy up song. And then it's like, whoa, hang on. And it, it's, as we talked about, a bit of reflection and savoring. And that it, 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 it just sort of goes hand in hand with that too. Yes, exactly. And that's really what I, what I wanted to come across in the single is that, it, it, you know, people take a lot of things for granted. And, uh, you know, myself included. I think everybody's guilty of that. And this is all just about how important it is to remember those moments. And, and I remember when I was a really little girl and I was on my dad's shoulder and we were, we were at a place called Finger Lakes in Michigan and there was a light, a light show. They had like a laser show. And my dad said to me, take a picture with your mind. And which is so funny because we didn't have phones back then. Yep. Um, <laughs> but I can still picture that moment and I remember it so clearly in my head and I must've been, three or four. And I'm so happy that he said that because I really try and do that when I'm um, out living my life. I, I'm the last person to pull my phone out, which is not so good when it comes to social media, but 
if I'm at a concert, I always just want to soak it in and pay attention yeah. and just be there. And I usually ask the people next to me if they can send me their photos because <laughs> I just want to be there and be present. I'm kind of the same. I'm there to enjoy the show, and it's only afterwards when you know I sort of think maybe I should have taken a photo, but I didn't want to. I, I wanted to enjoy and be in the moment. So you know, I get exactly. That. Um, yeah, yeah. Daniel, I'm waiting for the video. What's happening with the video? I am beyond excited for the video, and I haven't told anybody about it yet at all. You're the very first person to ask to. Um, the video will be out in the next couple of weeks. So yeah. it'll be very soon. Um, and I will be sure to send it over to you, but I am super excited about it. I had the best time filming this video. Um, I filmed it with four other girls. Um, it was out in California and they are very talented girls. Um, but I haven't made too many announcements about it yet. Yeah. So you'll have to stay, t- you'll have to stay tuned on it, but I am just beyond excited about the video well i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to it as uh, your other videos are fantastic so i'm looking forward to seeing this one now one thing i need to oh, ask you. you in nashville there there's this wonderful little spot called the bluebird and i understand um you had a bit of an experience there only what the last couple of days yes last night actually last night, okay. was the very yes yes last night i performed the bluebird cafe Ooh. for the very first time ever And uh, it was actually also my very first time ever stepping foot in the Bluebird Cafe, despite the fact that I've lived in Nashville for six years. (laughs) Will you be going back? Well, I truly hope so. It was the most magical night. Um, It's just such an iconic place. And there's so many artists that have been found there that when I walked in there, I I rarely get nervous to perform anymore. I perform all the time. But I was... I was so, I would say not nervous. I was just so excited that I had butterflies yeah. because so many people before me have stepped on that stage um, that have just made it all the way to the top. And it was a really, really amazing experience. And I just, I hope that they, they want me to come back. Um, but it was actually alongside Tony Arada and Tony Arada wrote the dance for yep. Garth Brooks among a million other songs. Yep. Uh, but it was really magical just sitting on, on stage with him and being able to watch him sing the dance and see where wow. that song actually came from was really a cool moment. So what did you end up singing? Well, I sang my new single heat of the moment okay. and that's actually what I opened with. Yep. Um, and then I thought I was, <laughs> I thought I was only going to play two songs <laughs> So I had that song um, and another song picked out, but then it ended up that we each got to play four songs. Mm. So I tried out new songs on the crowd that nobody's heard yet. They're not recorded yet. And I said to everyone, okay, at the end of the show, just tell me if I should record these songs. (laughs) And everyone, well, not everyone, but a bunch of people came up to me and said, you have to record this one or you have to record that one. And so... um, Hopefully, I, I get back to, to Canada. I like to record yeah. in Canada and uh, get back there soon and start recording some of these new songs. Well, you're on the stage there with Tony while he's doing the dance. What did you learn from watching him do that and experiencing that, you know, so close? Oh, my gosh. It was the most moving moment. You know, I got to speak with him afterwards, and what a genuinely nice person, first of all. Yeah. Um, but he's had so much success, and he has performed the dance gosh, must be a million times now, (laughs) you know, he performs it almost every night. And I sat back and I listened to him and there was so much feeling in his voice and so much feeling in the room and emotion. And I thought to myself, I really hope that, you know, in 30 years from now, when I sing my very first single crazy, I still have the feeling and emotion that he has when he sings this song because it was just really incredible to to watch that and still uh, it's, he it didn't feel worn out at all it just felt like he had just written it the day before well i saw an interview with him and he said that performing that song he knows he's going to have to perform it all his life and he and he said yeah. basically and i'm paraphrasing here that he likes to perform it like it's the very first time because he says you never know there's someone in that audience that's never heard it and it could be the, the best song for them ever. So he, he like that's in his mind. He's thinking that when he performs it, even though, as you said, he's performed it so many times, he's doing it like it's the first time because he never knows who's going to be in that audience that's going to hear it for the first time. Yes, and he 
afterwards he shook my hand and he said, you know, he gave me a ton of compliments, which was yep. just amazing. Um, but he said to me kind of what you're saying right now. He said, the, he said, the way you perform tonight is the way you need to perform all the time. He said, because you're, you never know who's going to be in the crowd watching yeah. you. He said, when Garth Brooks was in the crowd watching him uh, perform that song, Garth came up to him and said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut that if I ever get a record deal. And for three years, uh, Tony's songs got turned down by everybody. And then three years later, Garth Brooks got um, that record deal, yeah. and he came back and he recorded the dance. And so Tony said to me, if you get the door slammed in your face for 10 years, he said it might be the best thing that will ever happen to you, which I thought was really cool. Some good advice from someone who's been there and wants to pass it on and pay it forward too. Absolutely, absolutely. He was wonderful. Well, Daniel, what's happening for the rest of the year? We've got the song out at the moment that we'll get to hear shortly, but what's what's happening for the rest of the year? You said you've got all this you've got a ton of music. So what's going on? Well yes, I've been I've been waiting for two years to release music and during those two years I've been writing as well. I've met a lot of new writers. Um, so I have a trip planned to go back home and record a little bit more music and I'm hoping to get um, more singles out this year and if if everything falls into place and if things really settle down, I want to come back to Australia, hopefully yeah. early next year, maybe even for Tamworth. Um, so for the next year, I'm going to be releasing music, and then hopefully the year after, I'll be able to come and sing it for everybody live. Oh, we certainly, certainly hope so. Looking forward to that. Uh, now, just I just want to ask you this. Now, you said you'd like to go back to Canada to do the recording, but Nashville... With all everyone in Nashville, that's some of the the best musos in the world. What's what's wrong with Nashville to record? <laughs> that's a funny question. So, um, in so my husband is my producer, and he's American, um, and he plays a lot of the instruments and everything. Well, he plays pretty much everything that you hear on the records, yeah. um, and we have an at home studio. Um, but there's a thing called CanCon, <laughs> and that is for Canadian radio. Um, Canadian radio has to play a certain percentage of Canadian content. Yep. And if I write a song with an American, um, it's not considered Canadian content unless I record it in Canada. Oh, so um, okay. I go home. I have a, a really great friend with a studio called Northwood Studios, and uh, we collaborate and we go up there and record up there. But also, there's a lot of really amazing musicians in Canada um, and there's a lot of new music that is coming out of Canada right now and I like to stay connected with as many people as I can and if yep. it's through that recording process then you know it just kind of grows my own sound as well. Yeah, understand that. That makes perfect sense to me. We kind of have a similar rule here in Australia that if you're from New Zealand and you record a song and it becomes a huge hit and you come over to Australia, you're suddenly Australian. So we, that, that's how it is. So Kiwis, they can do they can do fantastic things, but as soon as they have success, they're Australian. That's 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 the rule. So I don't know if we could stretch it to Canadians. That if you came over here, recorded a big number one song, whether we'd call you Australian, we could well, we could bend the rule a bit. I don't know. Well, I think you guys are in the Commonwealth, so I'm pretty much Australia, <laughs> Australian just by you know by law. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's there's a loophole there. We found ones. We can exploit it to your advantage. Yes, yes. I love that. That is a great idea. I would. I do feel like I am. I feel like I have three homes, and one is Nashville, one is Canada, and one is Australia. I truly do feel that way. Well, that's good to hear, and hopefully we'll see you in our home very, very soon. But at the moment, we've got your new song here. Danielle, it's, I love chatting to you. I look forward to having some more chats throughout the year as we hear more of your music. But we've got your current song. It's been a long time, folks, so get ready for this one. You'll love the little the second verse, folks. You're going to love the second verse, believe me. It's a great song, Danielle. Thank you so much for spending time with us. And if you could please introduce it for all the Flow listeners. Thank you. Thank you so much, Clayton, for taking the time to chat with me. And my name's Danielle Todd, and you are listening to Heat of the Moment. I remember 2007 We were all racing hand in hand to the edge of the dark Oh, we jumped in, never forget that feeling Time seemed to slow itself way down Oh, man. 
show a shake, yeah And bring it to your knees You watch dreams getting shattered A heart stop beating And someone's always leaving It gives life a whole new meaning To live wild and free With no worries so carelessly Nothing better than facing the world together Never letting anyone change our ways Keep learning from our mistakes And we won't be afraid to own them Living in the heat of the moment This life is all we have And the moments they only pass So live wild and free Nothing better than facing the world together